Hello everybody, my name is Edson and welcome back to my final E3 2019 video. This is recorded after the, the conferences, after the event, after everything's said and done. And this is my E3 top 10. This is, I should preface this by saying this is my, my personal top 10, not the top 10 that I think, the 10 best games at E3. This is just the 10 games that I was most excited to see, hear about, I was surprised about and I was just like excited about. It's my personal top 10. And I want to give a few hon honourable mentions uh, before we, we get into the actual top 10. Uh, and these games, that didn't make it to the top 10 for a few reasons and I'll explain them as I just quickly say them. Uh, the first being Deathloop, uh, the second being Ghostwire Tokyo. Both of these, uh, we just really heard about them. Uh, like there were cinematic trailers, no gameplay, it's the first stage of hearing about them, so I'm excited. But also, we could hear, we could not even hear about them ever again. They could get cancelled. Until we see gameplay, I'm not too concerned. But I, I was excited. I was happy to, that they were announced. They sound promising, but I just didn't want to add them to the top ten. Uh, FIFA 20, because FIFA 20 comes out every year. I buy it every year. It's not that big of a thing, but they brought in Street Football, Volta Football, which is a big, it, it's a big thing for me. Uh, but, like I said, it didn't make it into the top 10. Eden Ring, which is the game that's been uh, co-written by George R. R. Martin. And, again, similar to Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop. Just a cinematic trailer, so and I want to see more from this. Hopefully we see more from this next E3. Uh, and the final honourable mention was Project Scarlet. And that is because we didn't actually see the console. That's the only reason. It would be in my top 10, but we didn't actually see the console. It will be in my top 10 next year, along with the Sony PlayStation 5 or whatever they call it. Uh, and whatever they're calling this one, should I say, because it won't be called Project Scarlet. That's a weird name. Um, but yeah, that that would be uh, an honourable mention as well. So now let's get into the top 10. Uh, and to start off with number 10, and I'm going to do these in order. Number 10 of my top 10 of E3 is Roller Champions. Now this game, it looks like a, a mix between... Lucio Ball in Overwatch and Rocket League. That's sort of like what I'm getting from it. Um, and again, this it's a while away before it's released, but I it's just it has some promise. Rocket League really hit off well um, back in the day, and it's still going well now. And I definitely think there's room for another game similar to it. Whether this is the one, I don't know. But I had a lot of fun playing Lucio Ball in Overwatch. So I was one of the few people that freaking loved that. So even if this game doesn't like completely take off, I genuinely feel I'm going to really enjoy it. Because I really enjoy Rocket League. I still play it to this day. I go back every now and then, play an hour or two once a week. I, st I absolutely love Lucio Ball in Overwatch. And I was one of the few people that really did enjoy it. Uh, and genuinely enjoyed it. And I think this could be a good hybrid. I, I quite like the look of it. Um, I know it's not exactly Lucio, but it just reminds me of like the skating and stuff like that. And it genuinely, it looks it looks quite fun. So I'm looking forward to playing it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing more from this as the years go on. Uh, I don't think it will be released until late. It's, I don't think it's going to be released until later next year or something. But I'm looking forward to it, definitely. Um... So yeah, Roller Champions my number 10. Number 9, Age of Empires Definitive Edition. Uh, now, Age of Empires is a game that I played as a kid. I was more into the Command and Conquers, but I still played Age of Empires. I'm still I'm stoked for the Command and Conquer remakes that got announced last E3. Wish we could have heard a little bit more about them, but it is what it is. Um, Age of Empires Definitive Edition uh, is the remake of uh, Age of Empires 2, is it? Or the both the first and second? I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little bit unsure on that. But it's the remake of the original Age of Empires games. And again, I, I played these as a kid. So I probably will get this and I'll, I will enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy the Command & Conquer remakes a lot more. But I'm, I'm hyped for this. Like Age of Empires, Command & Conquer, those sorts of games... They sort of like ushered in the, the era of like civilization and those sorts of games. Especially like Total War and stuff like that as well. They ushered those sort of games in. And it's one that I I, I will always enjoy. Especially Command & Conquer. I, hide that, I hold that so highly. And I sort of throw Age of Empires in there. 
So yeah, Age of Empires the remake. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of excited for it, honestly. And who knows? Like I may get it, and I'll be like, damn, this is so good. And then like a week later, I may never play it again. But it could be something that I chuck a couple of months into. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when it comes out. But I, I'm ninety five percent certain I'll be buying it. Uh, then coming in at number eight is Gears Five, uh, and Gears of War is a is a game. When I originally got the Xbox 360, Gears Gears of War was the the secondary thing for me. Halo was always the the reason that I I got into Xbox originally. I got the Xbox 360. Uh, Halo was the, the the franchise for me that sold the Xbox that like tipped me over the edge. Also, all of my friends were on Xbox. That was the main reason. But like games wise. Halo was the reason. Gears of War, I played, and I really did enjoy the first couple, but I sort of just sort of fell out of love with it. But this Gears 5, the campaign looks insane. I'm not too concerned about the multiplayer. I could never really get on with the multiplayer in Gears, but the campaign looks freaking amazing. You've got a female protagonist, and the trailers they've been releasing, the story bits they've been releasing, the gameplay they've been releasing, oh my gosh, it looks amazing. And I genuinely... I can't wait to play this. Obviously, I think it's just going to be a launch title for the um, the next console for me. It's not going to be a, a title that I I pick up before. Um, I'm I'm genuinely excited to play this. And again, I'm probably only going to play the single player, but I will enjoy it. I'm I'm fairly certain. So, Gears of War has been slowly peaking my interest a little bit more recently, especially with all this Gears Five stuff, and especially with what they're doing with it. It looks really promising. Uh, then coming in at number uh, what are we on six, have we wait, we've done Roller Champions, Age of Empires, Gears, Blair Witch. There we go, Blair Witch number six, no number seven. I can count, guys. What are you on about? Blair Witch. Now you may be thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. You give an honourable mention to Eden Ring, Ghostwire Tokyo, and Deathloop because they didn't give us any gameplay. Now, Blair Witch didn't really give us gameplay either. Uh, and that's why you might be you might be saying whoa 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 whoa, um, but they did technically there was gameplay in there, but it was more like a cinematic trailer with a tiny bit of gameplay. You know, it it was one of those like ninety percent cinematic trailers built in with ten percent gameplay that's been carefully edited and and picked out to to fit in with the. Uh, to, to fit in with the trailer and it may be rendered out again and stuff like that so you don't I, I don't really class it as like a gameplay trailer or anything uh, but Blair Witch looks extremely extremely good I I, th I think the horror genre is is missing is missing some big games like Outlast is, is a big one for horror enthusiasts um, Alan Wake back in the day was a game that I played and it's it wasn't too much horror it's more like just like a spooky creepy game uh, and it was, had a very good story. And Blair Witch looks like a mix between Outlast and, and Alan Wake. And I, honestly, I I have high hopes for this. Not, I'm genuinely interested in it because of uh, sort of like Alan Wake and stuff like that. And it does remind me similar of Alan Wake's like a first person Alan Wake mixed with Outlast. Now, if it's as scary as Outlast, maybe I won't play it. But... If it's a little bit less scary and closer towards the Alan Wake style of scariness, maybe, maybe I'll pick it up. But I'm more, I'm more adding this into my top ten because genuinely I'm just happy for, uh, for, for like horror fans. You know, like it's it's a genre that's difficult to to get to sort of like develop games for because it's not got the biggest. Like if you're developing a first person shooter, there's the the audience base that you have is massive. If you're developing a horror game, the audience base you have is easily, I don't know, like 20% of that of like an FPS or something like that. Then I'm making up numbers, but I imagine that's probably what it is. And so you're already fighting and losing battle in that sense. You sort of like, you really need the game to hit off for it to do well um, in terms of like sales compared to other games. But this one genuinely it looks it looks very promising and i'm looking forward to seeing the release of this i'm looking forward to seeing uh horror fans and stuff like that excited for this because it genuinely does look like it's gonna it's gonna do the the, the genre well you know um and then coming in at number six is bleeding edge now bleeding edge is a game that a lot of people are saying it's an overwatch competitor 
maybe. I don't. I don't really think it is. Uh, it's a four v four, sort of shoot 'em up style, arcadey looking, steampunk esque, like kind of Overwatchy looking type game. Um, and it's it's the it's the new IP from Ninja Theory, which we were rumored to get, obviously during this uh, the, the the Microsoft conference at E3, um, and we knew that it was going to be called Bleeding Edge. It'd been leaked quite a few times, so we we knew Ninja Theory were announcing a new IP called Bleeding Edge. They didn't really know what it was, and it looks interesting. Like the the trailers look super well done. Um, it sounds good in theory. I want to see the gameplay. I really do. And because, obviously, I'm personally so obsessed with Overwatch, I've put... I still play it to this day. I've played it since release. I've played every single competitive season. I, I love the games itself, and I, I love the competitive aspects of that. I'm a massive fan of the Overwatch League. So, like, any game that resembles Overwatch and comes in looking similar to Overwatch and, and tries to appeal to the same sort of fans, I'm going to take notice, obviously... And Bleeding Edge looks promising. Again, I want to see gameplay because so many games come in looking similar, sounding similar, promising to 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 appeal to the same fans, and nothing's really done that ever, really, since Overwatch came out. Nothing's done that. A couple have tried, a couple have come and come close, but nothing's really done that. So Bleeding Edge, I'm I'm excited for, and the fact that they've been working on it for a while, I imagine it's probably going to release. As a launch title on the next gen consoles, exclusive to Microsoft and then on PC as well. Um, will it be good? Who knows? I'm just looking forward to seeing gameplay on the base of it, 4v4 co op, the style that, that they're showing in the trailer with a 4v4 co op, uh, shoot 'em up, mash 'em up type thing. It looks fun. It looks hella fun. Um, and I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that. So fingers crossed it's good. I can't wait to see some more gameplay. Next year's E3 is going to be lit to look at that. Uh, and then moving on to the top five. So, top five. Rainbow Six Quarantine. Now, the reason I'm showing Rainbow Six Quarantine is because, again, this is breaking the realms of Tom Clancy Rainbow Six type games. A lot of... They, they've been focusing on... Especially especially with Rainbow Six. Um, like Rainbow Six Siege. It's it's very competitive. It's it's the CS:GO equivalent. Um, it's it's a very popular game. They're constantly releasing content for it, and fair play, it's doing really well. Now, Rainbow Six Quarantine is a three-player co-op, player versus environment game. So you're not pe like you're not playing against players, player versus player. You're not doing any of that. It's player versus environment. It's three-player, and Again, they didn't really show as much, so I want to see more. I want to see gameplay. I want to see all of this. But on the face of it, on the face of it, similar to Bleeding Edge, it sounds so good. I'm going to be able to play with a couple of my friends. Player versus environment. That sort of like... Because I'll tell you what, Rainbow Six has some of the best smooth-feeling shooter gameplay out there. But if the game's not your thing, the game's not your thing. So be it. But... The gameplay feels so smooth and so awesome. If they can bring that to this Rainbow Six Quarantine when it's player versus environment and I've got a, a, a good couple of friends that want to play that game and are into playing that game with me, that's going to be a hell of an experience and I'm really looking forward to it. Again, I want to see more. Same with Bleeding Edge. I want to see some gameplay. I want to see how it works. I want to see a lot of stuff. But on the face of it, this sounds so, so, so good to me and I can't wait to give it a try. Uh, and then coming in at number four is... Honestly, my surprise of the whole conference, it's an indie game. It's the only indie game on this list, and there's a reason. It looks freaking amazing. It's called 12 Minutes. It got a big segment, to be honest. It got two or three minutes during the the Microsoft conference, and it looks amazing, honestly. Uh, it's, like, over the top. Like, you can see in the trailer that you, that's on your screen now, it's... it's the, the look of it looks extremely... It looks like... It's basically a bird's eye view in a inside looking world. You know the game Inside, the ones that uh, developed Limbo? It looks like an inside looking world, like art style. Uh, 
Bird's Eye View. And it's essentially an interactive thriller about a man stuck in a time loop. And I imagine it's gonna be like a 12 minute type thing that you keep reliving. But it just sounds, it sounds like a, a really cool concept. Obviously with it being an indie game as well. You gotta show love to the indie games that look really cool like that. Um, it looks really well designed, really well thought out. If the story lives up to how it sounds of this interactive thriller about a man stuck in a time loop, sounds freaking cool as it is. On top of all of the stuff that we've seen, this game could be one of the best indie games ever. It could be up there with Limbo, with Inside, with Trials, with all of those games that I, I hold so highly uh, from, from the indie games um, genre. And honestly, it's it, it looks really promising. And I highly recommend, take two minutes out of your day, go and watch that trailer, and you'll be, you'll be excited as I am for this game. <laughs> you really will. Uh, okay, then... Top three, top three. We're there. We're at the final three. Obviously, I think you can probably guess what two of them are, but you may not be able to guess this one. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion. A lot of people were a bit eh about this, but for myself, I know it. I know it looks over. So Watch Dogs. I played the first game. I really enjoyed it. I played it on console. I've not played Watch Dogs two. I still need to go and play that. Um, but I really enjoyed the first one. It was, it wasn't, it didn't live up to my expectations, but I had really high expectations for it. I shouldn't have had such high expectations for it, but again, that's sort of like Ubisoft and their uh, and their conferences. They sort of like, they, they, they play up a, they, they're really good at announcing new games. They really have, they build such high expectations for people. I don't know, if, I don't know if it's the way that they do the trailers, the way they do the gameplay segments when they show them, but they just, they're really good at it. And fair play to them honestly and i've this game watchdogs this franchise it's one that I, I i really enjoyed when it came out i wasn't too concerned about the second game it wasn't just it wasn't something that really piqued my interest too much even though i did really enjoy the first one um but this one watchdogs 3 if a lot of people call it but watchdogs legion is its official name is based in london and that's honestly why it's appealing to me so much. It's set sort of like post, to me, it's set post Brexit <laughs> in like 50, 60 years or something. I feel like that's what they were trying to go with. But it's set sort of like post uh, government shutdown slash uh, government um, being taken over type stuff. And people are being spied on there's drones and all of this stuff it's it's kind of futuristic but not super futuristic there's like bombings there's there's a lot of like uncertainty people don't like trust each other and all of this um and and nobody trusts the government and people are trying to overthrow the government and all of this uh it's it's that sort of world and it's based in london and obviously there's a lot of people throwing jokes about everyone sounds cockney you can you can do that like it's to me, for a game to be set in the UK, like a game that's like open exploration and what and it be obviously GTA is never going to be based in the UK or London. That's always going to have the America feel about it. Honestly, Watch Dogs, like this is probably going to be the only game that's ever based in London. Like this style of game. Obviously, there'll be racing stuff and 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 those sort of things. So. I'm just excited for that, honestly, and I, I really am excited for it. And honestly, they've shown they've shown some stuff that you can that you sort of like build your own team and you can literally pick anyone in the game. I don't know if that's true. I'm a little bit skeptical on that, to be honest. But if that's true as well, that's going to be game breaking and that's going to be such a huge thing for gaming. If you can physically be anyone in the game, you can physically recruit anyone in the game. Because the story is like you need to build your team and overthrow the government or something like that. Uh, and you can pick like a granny off the street and you can get her to come and help you. Apparently. I don't know how much of this is true or whether they're sort of like there's going to be limitations or something. But on the face of it, it sounds freaking cool. And honestly, I enjoyed the first. So in my eyes, I enjoyed the first Watch Dogs. I really enjoyed... Um, so in my eyes, I'm looking at it as I, I, I enjoyed the first Watch Dogs. I had a little bit too too high expectations for it, but I, I really did enjoy it. 
Um, I completed it. I played it loads after I got like close to like a hundred percent. I was I was that sort of that's how much I enjoyed it. I was kind of going for the hundred percent on it after I'd like completed the game. So I did enjoy it. The second one, again, granted I haven't played, but I probably will at some point. Um, ne that I know that single player games like that, I sort of like wait until they're out a bit and then I go back and play them. If they're not games that I want to like play right from the off or something. Um, so in my eyes, they, they've released a game already that I've really enjoyed. So they do, this style of game does appeal to me, obviously. With it being in London, ticks another box. The the things that they're talking about in the game takes another box if it's all true. And honestly, this the story of the game, the fact that it's like post like post sort of government spying on people and all that, it's, it just sounds like a freaking cool story, you know? So it just ticks all the boxes for me. And as as memey as people are making it out and, and as as cringy as some people are saying in terms of like the accents and stuff, like everyone sounds cockney. Uh, was that a cockney accent? I don't know. It, with all of that, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it, man. I'm going to buy I'm going to enjoy the shit out of it. It looks hella fun. So I'm looking forward to that. That's my number three. Okay, top two. We're almost there. We're almost showing you number one. But before that, number two, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. We knew we were going to get this from EA. But the 15-minute gameplay segment that we got for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order... This is a game that I genuinely was a little bit uns uncertain about. I was kind of looking forward to it. I'm like, a single-player Star Wars game, modern-day game development and stuff like that. S sounds good to me. I'm, I'm all in. Like, oh, wait, EA are involved? Hmm. That's one that's got me a little bit... I'm a little bit uncertain now. But as they talked more about it, over the years, I've been a little bit more excited, but I've just been holding back. I'm like, please don't ruin this. Please don't ruin this. Because this is probably one of the only Star Wars single-player games that we'll get for a while. Uh, and if this one flops, maybe someone else will never make one. So, like, you kind of need this one to go well, you know? And they've been butchering the Star Wars multiplayer stuff in recent years. Thanks, EA. Um, so that looks like it's not going to be something that people touch for a, a while. <laughs> Uh, if if anyone else can ever touch it. Um, but Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, they came in and they gave us a 15-minute uncut gameplay segment from the game. Oh my gosh. They delivered. It looks... Okay, so I can't speak for the story. The story is canon, so any characters that you see, any sort of like main character stuff like that that you see in the world are in... Star Wars, the Star Wars universe, you might see them in a film or something like that. So, the story is canon. I can't speak for the story itself, obviously, from a 15-minute gameplay segment. But, let me break this down. The gameplay, it looks fluid. It looks really polished. It looks like you can, honestly, combo really crazy... Uh, sort of like combat type things. You can you can get really creative with the combat. Um, they showcased. They obviously had someone that had played the game, one of the testers that had been playing the game for a while, because he knew all the tricks, all the things that you could do. You could pull people. You could stop time. Do all of this stuff. Um, and they showcased all of these things that you can do. And honestly, when people start playing this game, they're going to get super creative with it. So you can get super creative with the combat. Everything that you would think a Jedi can do in the Star Wars universe, you can do, basically. You can pull someone... You can, like, slow down time, pull the enemy into the bullet that he's just shot. You can... There's so much stuff that you can do. So, they, they showed a really cool... Uh, the, the combat mechanics and stuff, they showed that it looks amazing. It looks 10 out of 10. Uh, it looks like people can get super creative with it. The, the gameplay itself looks super fluid and looks genuinely really fun um it doesn't it doesn't look like you have uh too much sort of like downtime in between stuff uh the 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 cutscenes to gameplay sort of like percentage looks spot on in my opinion from the 15 minutes that we saw so gameplay the feel of the game the look of the game everything like that it's all there the only thing the only thing that we're waiting on now is the story which we can't obviously judge until the game comes out if the story holds up and the story is 
as good as everyone wants it to be and as good as Star Wars fans really need it to be for a single player Star Wars game, this game could go down as one of the best games in history, without a doubt. It genuinely could. Because everything else that we've seen, all of the other the the things that people judge games on, ev every box is ticked. Every single box is ticked. All of them are ticked. The only the only box that we have now is the story. That's it. That's all we have. Because we know this it's not like we're not judging a multiplayer game or something like that. We've got everything we need. We've had a 15 minute uncut gameplay segment and everything looks amazing. The only thing we know need to know now is the story. So and I'm I'm genuinely think that they've got a good story here. I'm like I'm I really do think they have. So I think this could be one of the best games that we have in a it, the best story games we've had in a, in a long time. Uh, it can be up there with with some of the greats, honestly. So please, as long as this story is good, as long as the 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 storyline is, and I'm smirking just thinking about it. This game could be so good. As long as the storyline is good, this game could be up there as one of the best of all time. So I'm looking forward to to getting this game when it releases. I'm definitely buying it. And I'm just praying that the story is there because everything else is there. Everything else is there. Go and watch this 15-minute gameplay segment. It doesn't spoil anything. Um, and you can see some really cool stuff, especially if you're a Star Wars fan, especially if you like that universe, you, you like the sound of a Star Wars single-player game, definitely go and check it out. Uh, and then last but not least, my number one of E3 2019 is... You heard me mention it earlier when I was talking about Gears of War 5. Halo Infinite. Holy shit! Halo... Halo's always had a special place in my heart. Halo was the first sort of single player games that I super got into um, when I had a console. I had the the original Xbox. I had the Xbox 360. I've since switched to PlayStation 4 to, to, re, to play all the PlayStation games that I've missed over the years. But I've always known when the next consoles come out, um, I will be going back to Xbox. And I will, I'm 99% certain I'm going back to the Xbox, mainly just because of Halo Infinite. Um, Halo, to me, has always been a... Uh, especially the single-player... I've enjoyed the, the multiplayer, and I have my stints really enjoying the multi multiplayer. And I may really enjoy this multiplayer, but that's not the reason I'm getting it. The gameplay... Um, the single-player for Halo, to me, it just hits something different. The, the first... The first ever Halo game, that story, that gameplay, the music, the the universe, the the combat, everything, everything was amazing to me, and it was it was perfect for my time in life. The games that I was looking, that I was enjoying, it was amazing. And every I've played every Halo that's ever come out. Um, I've played all the stories. I played them through loads. The first couple of Halos, especially the first one, I got all like the schools and all of that. Um, I I got all of the achievements and everything like that for the for the story. I I love Halo, and this Halo Infinite campaign. Obviously, we only got cinematic stuff, but the cinematic trailer just it just brings it all back, and I just. I'm so excited to play this. I've not been this excited to play a game since Red Dead Redemption 2. And the last time I was that excited to play a game, the the last time, I would generally say was the Halos or Red Dead Redemption. There's only two games that I get super, super, super excited to play in terms of single player. It's Halo and Red Dead. That's it. They're the two games. I don't think anything will ever touch those two for me in terms of single player. Halo campaigns... And Red Dead Redemption, they they are held such high, like in at such height that I can't even reach them. In my opinion, I I genuinely I love Halo games so much. I love Red Dead Redemption games so much. Nothing, I don't think anything ever will come close to those games in terms of single player. Nothing ever. So this Halo Infinite, the trailer just oh it it got like it genuinely and. People will understand this when you have, like, there's a couple of games that people just get super excited for. I genuinely, like, something happened in my stomach. I was like, oh, it, like, it, butterflies were going, you know? It was, it looks so, so, so good. 
and again, there's no gameplay, but I don't. I, I just know it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. And I'm just so looking forward to playing this next installment of the story. Obviously, it's not going to come out until the, the launch of the next Xbox. I don't care, but I'm going to be getting that with the Xbox on day one. And that is going to be the game that I'm just going to sit down and play for like a week straight. And I cannot wait. Halo Infinite, number one for me. There's no doubt about it. My favorite game of this year's E3. I'm so looking forward to it. Uh, so that's it. That's that's my top 10 of E3 with five honorable mentions. I'm going to quickly run through them all. Deathloop, Ghostwire Tokyo, FIFA 20 for the Volta Football, Eden Ring, Project Scarlet, Roller Champions, Age of Empires Definitive Edition, Gears 5, Blair Witch, Bleeding Edge, Rainbow Six Quarantine, 12 Minutes, Watch Dogs Legion, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Halo Infinite. Oh my! This E3 was good. It genuinely, it was good. I was a little bit unsure going into this year's E3. Uh, obviously with the waiting for the consoles. And again, next year's E3 is just going to blow everything out of the water. Because we're going to get the two new consoles and everyone can showcase the games that they've been making for those consoles. So it's going to blow it out of the water. But this year's E3 genuinely was quite good to be honest. So I'm looking forward to, to playing these games over the coming years. Um, hopefully you guys are... Uh, looking forward to uh, all of the games that are coming out that were announced from E3. Let me know in the comments as well. Your top three, your favourite game, your top five, your top ten, top whatever. Let me know some of your favourites in the comments down below. Uh, let me know what you think of all the games that I've talked about. And thanks so much for watching. Make sure you give it a like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And as always, I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. <laughs>